All right, guys, here's the video. It's pretty simple stuff. Basically, it's just a condenser change out on a train aluminum coil. And basically, that's what I had to do today. And I went ahead and made a recording on it. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and click that notification bell. So today we are replacing a condenser on this old R22 system. The uh, Decided to repair it versus replace it. So we are here to change it. We have a leak down here in the bottom. So we're gonna strip it down and get started on it. So the leak was down here. Wasn't able to fix it, wasn't gonna try to fix it. Just gotta undo two copper lines down there. Transporting this was a real treat. Went ahead and took it out of the box, put cardboard in between here and there, and then on the ground, and then just put things back in around it so we'll get some of these things out of the way. So you got this line right here and that one right there. So we just need to unhook in those two spots there and braze them back on. So right there and there, so we're gonna do it. We're gonna get rid of this filter dryer. We're gonna put one new one on the inside. Of these little clips here that hold the wires from hitting the coil so we got to get those in place so now we're going to go ahead and purge this thing out pull the valve core out of there it's coming through the 3 8 and coming back on the suction we're purging through the evaporator to get everything out of there then we're going to go down there and cut it and then put the filter dryer in all right so here's the furnace 163 got to mount it right in there we should be good we got the nitrogen purging through All right, so I told them to put it on test, which took almost probably 20 minutes. We've got smoke alarms in the ducts. We've got smoke alarms up here. Oh, f hey! you've got to be kidding me. Run. Not sure if that got caught in the video or not, but I had put it in backwards because I had it flipped upside down. I had to put a little bit of paint up here in the top to make it look a little bit better, but crap happens, man. No leaks. Good deal. Time to evacuate. Quite the interesting contraption they got there. It looks like these outside pieces lock at the bottom first, bring them forward after you lock them in. Then the tops just kind of slide down there and there's a little channel at the bottom they got to set in. This is the first coil on one of these I've replaced, so not very hard at all. Actually kind of easier than uh, most of them I've ever done. Almost like they knew it was going to go bad. Everything's back on, capacitor's hooked back up. Just gotta pull the back. All right, 
right, so we got her down there and she held. Yeah, it stayed under a thousand. So we're just weighing in our refrigerant now and going to uh, get her back up and going. Testing out that ground gauge. Looks like I need to change the oil. All right, so we've got the initial charge weighed in. Maybe just a touch over. So we got some very large suction lines, stuff like that. Generally, everything's based off your liquid. Let's see what we're running. All right, so we just started it up on about 19 amps. I haven't looked to see exactly what uh, the norm is on this. Got about just shy of five subcooling, but like I said, it's just starting up. Superheat, we both pretty much don't have any, but it just started up, and the basement is pretty cold. Check our subcooling, see what's required. I think it was 10, but I don't remember. 10. So we'll watch it just a touch. It's a 2006. All right, she's starting to stabilize. Just hit subcooling of 10. Superheat's starting to build. TXV's starting to react. You can see it's four and rising. It was nothing before. Around 100 degree condenser and 34 almost on the evaporator. So far, so good. Seven degree superheat, not bad. It's climbing. I think everything's gonna work out here. Just gotta give it a little time to stabilize. We got that brass cap on the uh, Schrader port there. Um, they didn't send one with it, so I just used the one that I'm gonna use for my suction. Just put a regular cap on the suction. 10 and 10. Where will she end? This is a pretty decent unit. I mean, it's got a hard start kit already on it. And uh, coil's in really good shape. Uh huh. This, uh, it's already 66 degrees down in the basement, so it's not gonna run real super long here, which is really surprising it's done as long as it has, because it'll run uh, blowing practically right onto it. But it looks to me like we are right on the nose. Well guys, I know this one wasn't super exciting, but if you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna see more like it, make sure you subscribe and click that notification bell. Don't forget to check out the description down below for any links to any tools. And until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. All right, we have a TXV here. I did not uh, wanna let the refrigerant through. As you can see, that, it's from not using nitrogen. This is all fairly clean. That's not, that should be that color there. And your pin that goes up and down in your TXV has a lot of buildup on it and it's waxy on the end. So there's the problem. Everyone says it's the TXV. The problem is it was somebody didn't use nitrogen a lot of times. So there's your problem and why it's important to do it. It doesn't happen right away. It just accumulates over time. And it goes where it restricts. And that's what ends up killing it. Could have been cleaned maybe and put back together, but we ain't got time to, to do that and then not work and then have to do it all over again. This is a really weird one. It's an ice cream machine that uh, basically could not find a leak, so I had to add a little bit of trace gas, a little bit of trace gas, and then finally, I think I found it right here in the actual liquid or hot gas line. You come across here. It's not the hoses. Back in. So you got something back in here, and it's not these hoses because I'm not getting nothing up on those. So you come across. It's going to get real strong here in a minute. It's basically this whole section here looks like it's going to need completely cut out. 
Here's mine. Here's the factories. Stun brazen, virgin iron nitrogen through as best they can. This is one of those calls that just keeps getting. I went ahead and put a new uh, quarter inch stem in there. The other one was leaking, which is why my vacuum would not hold. So now we've got it replaced. It's pulling down, but there's quite a bit of moisture on this thing. I think the uh, filter dryer is going to have to do most of the work. Also, the customer is not using the right belts. And because of that, the motor's so high that the capacitor is hitting the fill, uh, hitting the uh, fill tube of the barrel, and they can't be put back into place. But if you take the belt off, it can be. So you need to use the right belts.